Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner. All right, come on out the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. It's been about a week since they had that ridiculous example of a fight. But I've been sick, so it's been hard to talk. However, of course, I did see it. It's been a week, actually. It was last Friday. I did see the fight. The fight between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. And I find it interesting how I had so many comments telling me what an idiot I was, how I didn't know what I was talking about. And quite frankly, Jake Paul kicked Mike Tyson's ass. In fact, he showed mercy on him. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Sure, like, subscribe, and follow. Hit that like button. Hit the bell. Become a member. Membership Live will be on Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock. <clears throat> but let's jump on in again. Jake Paul wins a clear, unanimous decision in his fight against Mike Tyson. The card itself was pretty damn good. The Amanda Serrano Katie Taylor fight was exceptional. Awesome fight. What a fight that was. So exciting. Those two women threw hands. I just wish women's fights were three round, three minute rounds. Because <clears throat> you would find out a whole lot more about these ladies if they got to fight for three minutes rather than two minutes. Katie Teller wins a unanimous decision. 95-94 on all three cards. And beats went beats Serrano for the second time. People thought it was a robbery. I'm not one of those people. It was a very good fight. It was a very close fight. Serrano was winning early. Katie Taylor won late. Depends on what you like. Do you like volume? Do you like power? Katie Taylor brought power. She hit her with the bigger shots. Serrano was heavy volume. I thought the 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 the, the, the text she, she posted or whatever, the tweet she made after the fight talking about the amount of punches. I thought that was weak. I thought the comments in the ring post fight were weak. That Taylor headbutts on purpose. That's ridiculous. She 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 fights with yeah she fights. Evander Holyfield did he headbutt on purpose? No. They're, they're bullish type fighters. They move, they go in quick. Heck, she had a point taken because of a headbutt, even though in that particular situation, he did not headbutt her. That was a great fight. I would love, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. I don't care that Taylor's beaten her twice. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight again. They fought in a phone booth. That was some good stuff. Very exciting. I think the, the trainer for Serrano should be embarrassed with the way he behaved after that fight. Conduct yourselves like professionals. If you're not happy with the decision, that's fine. But this stuff about she purposely headbutts and blah, 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 you sound like a punk. You shouldn't have fought, you shouldn't have taken this fight then, if that's what your belief was. <clears throat> it just so it just sounds so weak. And I do know that after the fact, Serrano ran those comments back, but her trainer sounds like a punk. I, I'm not a fan of that guy. But the fight itself, awesome, awesome fight. And if you would pick taking Serrano to win, I'm not going to argue with you on that. But people call it something a robbery. You can't have a robbery and call it the fight of the year as a robbery. Folks, the definition of a robbery is that means one person clearly, without question, won a fight. You know what a robbery was? A robbery was Triple G beating the shit out of Canelo in their first fight and it being a draw. That was a robbery. There's not a person on the planet who saw Canelo win more than three rounds in that first fight, except for the judges, or some of the judges. Everyone else saw Triple G win at least nine rounds. That's a robbery. This was not a robbery. This was a great fight. A fight of the year. Rounds that were very, very close. <clears throat> Did she get caught by a headbutt? Yeah, it sucks. It happens. And she could have bowed out right there. And at the time, 
Serrano would have won that fight via decision, in my opinion. But she kept, she chose to keep fighting. For which I salute her. Don't bow out on a bullshit headbutt. If you can keep on fighting, why would you bow out? And she fought wonderfully. But don't make excuses after the fact. It's not cool. You're lost. It is what it is. Great fight. But no, I don't think it was a robbery. Robbery is when you clearly see someone winning. Tell me the rounds that Serrano clearly won. Can you point out six that she clearly won? Can you? You can't. The rounds that she clearly won were early. Those were the clear rounds that she won. <clears throat> but not late. The last five rounds of that fight, six rounds were rock'em, sock'em, robot, man. That was a brawl. For which one fighter punched with more power, and that was Taylor. Taylor landed the heavier shots. But let's talk about this fight with Tyson and Paul. Tyson comes in. He's wearing a knee brace. Trips on the way to the ring. I told you before, he had 45 seconds of energy. And that's literally what happened. He had 45 seconds of energy. You guys believed the spliced up bullshit videos that were being put out to market this garbage. Jake Paul allowed this man to go eight rounds. That fight should have been over in four. The fight was over by the fourth. Mike Tyson was a statue. He could not move. And you guys are going to continue to tell me about this. Day. Show these, these highlight videos in hitting mitts. There's a big difference hitting mitts than hitting a person. There's a big difference in having punches come back at you. There's a big difference when you're allowed to be this close to your trainer because he knows he's not going to hit you. So you can look way better. And on top of that, there's a big difference because they're stopping and starting and stop, stop, start, start, stopping and starting, starting and stopping over and over again. That's not a boxing match, bro. Mike Tyson looked every bit of a 58 year old man, with the exception, his body looks fantastic. We should all be so lucky to look like that at 58 physically. But ability-wise, he's got none. It's over. It was over 20 years ago. Jake Paul gave him a payday. And you idiots out there, including the morons on ESPN, Fox Sports, all these buffoon athletes, Mike Tyson and knock him out. Get the fuck out of here. And then we're going to have to listen to, oh, it was rigged. There we go again. Because Mike Tyson didn't win, it was rigged. All oh, y'all, double middle finger. You were wrong. And this mentality of every fight that Jake Paul has is rigged. Shut the fuck up. The man's a boxing promoter. He's promoting one of the two best women's fighters in the world. In a man of Serrano. He's actually promoting boxing matches. Beyond his. He's putting money into this thing. You know what happens if you get caught fixing fights? One, you lose your promoter license. You'll never promote a fight again. But two, two, the big two, which is really the number one, you go to prison. You go to prison. The Disney boy does not want to go to prison. For what? For what reason? 60 million people watch this shit on Netflix. The buffer flicks. Because we all have dealt with the buffering issue. 60 million people watch this thing. It's the most watched boxing programming in the history of combat sports. And you can say it's because of Mike Tyson. Cool, no problem. 
The reality was Mike Tyson was always 58. He was always old. He was always going to be slow. And I told you from jump, he would have a 45 seconds to a minute worth of energy, and then it would be gone. And that's exactly what happened. He looked quick, real, real early. He looked kind of quick. But Jake Paul wasn't going to stand right in front of him, you idiots. Like, you guys are stupid. Fucking stupid. And look at all these clips of, oh, he's pulling his punches. Mike Tyson wasn't pulling his punches. He couldn't throw his punches. He's too slow. What's the point of throwing a punch when you're not going to hit the guy because he's that much further away from you? The explosion. Mike Tyson's entire boxing career was based on explosion. It wasn't based on power. It was explosion. The explosion made him more powerful. He would jump into everything. Like everything he would jump into. I watched Mike Tyson as a kid. Saw so almost all of his fights as a kid. And as an adult, naturally. Because he boxed until I was in my 20s. Late 20s, in fact. But stop it, man. Jake Paul, after round three, could have ended that fight at any time. Now, I don't agree with the stuff that Jake Paul said after, where he said, yeah, I mean, the stuff wasn't bothering me. And then, you know, yeah, I kind of like felt sorry for him and shit like that and didn't want to hurt him. That's your job, bro. Your job is to finish the fight. So you kind of embarrassed him by saying that. Next time, shut the fuck up. And Logan Paul's reaction to Jake, the like Mike Tyson saying, I'll fight you. And Logan Paul saying, I'll kill you, Mike. Logan, shut the fuck up. Have some class. I started to like you, Logan. Just have, have a little class there because you know what? Your younger brother will fuck you up. Because your younger brother, Jake Paul, is a much better boxer than you are. You flailed around versus Floyd Mayweather, who's four or five inches smaller than you and 40 pounds lighter. Stop it, my guy. But, folks. This thing about fixing fights, every time Jake Paul wins, it's a fix, and stop it. Mike Tyson was a statue. This stuff, he's biting his gloves so he doesn't throw a punch. No, he's not. He's done that. He's always kept this shit up here. Always. His knee was shot. His legs were shot. He could not move. And those of you who said, well, when, when Jake Paul bowed to him, which was stupid in itself, with 10 seconds left, Mike Tyson's the uppercut him. He couldn't have even reached him. Like, he couldn't have even reached him. Jake Paul could have ended that fight any time he wanted in the last five rounds. He chose not to. He played around. He toyed around. <laughs> Tyson couldn't move. And exactly what I told you was what would be would be. Except for the fact I did think that Jake Paul would knock him out. I do. I did think Jake Paul would knock him out, and I do believe that Jake Paul decided not to knock him out because he felt sorry for him. I do believe that completely, and I'm happy he didn't because it would have been real sad to watch a 58-year-old man get carried out on a stretcher after that fight because that's what would have happened if Jake Paul had come all the way through because Jake Paul did not throw the heaviness of the shots that he threw against Tyron Woodley or Anderson Silva, or Nate Diaz, or Mike Perry. Mike Tyson will always have a solid chin. But this shit was, stop it, folks. You guys believe those stupid hype videos, man. Y'all dumb. You're dumb. You don't know dick. You don't know dick. You don't know the most basic thing of marketing and promoting a fight is to make both people look like savage killers. And all you bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And now Evander Holyfield challenges Mike Tyson and says the world wants to see it. Nobody wants to see that bullshit. We saw you get knocked at your head off by Vitor Belfort, who was in his mid-40s in less than a round. 
We have two guys standing in front of each other who can't move. Get out of here, man. <clears throat> Please, Mike Tyson, it's over. Do not do this again. But you folks, you're going to believe what you want to believe because you want to convince yourselves that Mike Tyson really is that guy at 58. He's not. He's just not. He's an old man who's so well past, he's 30 years past his prime. And he looked old because he is old. But you believed the bullshit videos. You believed all the nonsense. And now you look stupid. And now you're stupid. You look stupid. But hey, yeah, I'm the one that all y'all told him was dumb. And I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But of course, now your your next your next comment is that the thing was fixed. So, yeah, like I said, Jake Paul wins, it's fixed. Mike Tyson wins, it's just because Jake Paul's trash. And even then, Jake Paul wins, he's still trash. Whatever, whatever. He does have some people that have offered fights. Arthur B, B, the B, B debris, whatever his name, the guy that just beat Dimitri Bivol. Um, he's offered a fight. I would I, let's go see it. Let's see what happens. Jake Paul should take that fight. He should absolutely take that fight. He won't, but he should. Because at the end of the day, Jake, at, at the end of the day, Jake Paul knows his skill. He knows that any person with 12 fights is not fighting for a title. Any person with 12 fights is fighting nobodies. But yet people get mad because he's fighting people who are old and over the hill. But that's typically what happens when you fight 12 fights in boxing. You're not fighting champions. You're fighting bums. And yes, Mike Tyson at 58 is a bum. He's a bum at 58. He's not a fighter. He's an old man. But hey, it is what it is. Overall, Netflix, a big fat F for that garbage because the fact that you guys were prepared with your servers, that people went through that crap with buffering the whole night, Y'all suck. But that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm sure many of you think the fight was fixed. Whatever. I couldn't care less. Told you Jake Paul would whoop Mike Tyson's ass. He did. It was embarrassing. That's all I got. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate y'all. Be sure to like, subscribe, pound the like button, ring that bell. Become a member. It's Combat Corner. Come on now.